All right, in this video, we'll do a compare review between the Forerunner 110 and I'll compare it against the Forerunner 405. Let's compare the size of the, these two GPSs here and you can see that the, the 110, of course, is a little thinner. Uh, the GPS antenna is over here and you can see it's a lot thinner than uh, the 405. So it's definitely a nicer watch uh, to wear than the 405. 405 was really the first one that people could wear during the day without looking too too silly as compared to wearing the 305 or the 205. Uh, but the 110 makes it uh, even more wearable. It actually does feel pretty good on your wrist. When you put it on it actually does uh, feel more like a watch. Uh, when you're wearing the 405 you always got the antenna right here and that always presented a problem there. Alright, so look, look at some of the displays here. Uh, the 405 had a, a fairly decent display, but the 110 definitely has a much re uh, more readable display, I find. The uh, changes that they do have is that you can actually uh, turn off the watch, something you, that you can't do with the 405. Uh, the 110 is bare bones, does not have a lot of features. Um, the big ones that are missing, you don't have interval timers, you don't have advanced workouts, you don't have auto scroll, you don't have auto pause, you don't have courses, you don't have navigation, you do have heart rate, and you don't have data fields. So if you're a data field junkie where you use all your possible screens and all sorts of data uh, during a run that you look at as you scroll through your run that you would do on your 405 or 305 or 310 you can't do this on this. Here you only get distance at the top you get your time or heart rate in the middle and you have your lap pace down at the bottom unlike the 405 where you have three or four screens that you can customize with all sorts of data fields and uh, the one thing that the 110 doesn't have is auto scroll. So if you do have a heart rate strap, you can't scroll through your heart rate and the main data screen. So you always have to hit the page button. Something that you can set auto scroll on the 405 and all the other ones. In terms of battery life, they say that the 110 will be good for about three weeks on power save mode compared to the two weeks with the 405. The 110 really comes with a USB cable to the AC wall adapter. You can unplug it and plug it in as a USB to your computer. When you do that, it will charge the battery on the 110. The other thing I was curious with was the uh, satellite accuracy. I went down to the local track. It was a certified track within 10 centimeters, which is about this much. Uh, so, uh, so what I did was I brought a 405, a 305, and a 110 to the track and I did two kilometers, five laps around the track with the 405 in one hand and the 110 on the other hand. Did the five laps, went to the other side of the track, I did another five laps with the 305 and the 110. And basically the 405 had the best accuracy of the day. On the other hand, didn't quite do as a good job. In fact, it did the worst between the three types of forerunners that I had. You just basically start your run and you stop it and reset it to save your activity and that's it. Data management 405, 305s, 310s you can look at your history, you can go through the labs, you can manage all your workouts on the watch itself. With the 110 you can't do that. You have to hook it up to your computer open up the Garmin drive which is about 5 megs of space and manage your workouts that way. In a way I kinda did like the uh, simplicity of the 110 you know it had basically the core data that I wanted to get which was distance, pace, and heart rate. The only thing I didn't like was that I couldn't all scroll uh, to the heart rate and my timer for whatever reason but I had to basically once I started my workout I hit page so I can see the heart rate and then I had the data that I wanted. But if you're a beginner runner or one of those types of runners that you don't particularly care too much about accuracy, you just want to run. Uh, you don't want to deal with beeps and alerts and all that stuff or heart rate. This is not bad. If you do get a forerunner, odds are that you probably will be 
wanting uh, additional features down the road based on your training program or what have you. So you'll probably end up wanting to upgrade this pretty quick. So you can either either jump to something like the 405 or the 410 or right now as of uh, April 2011 you can still get the Garmin 305 at a fairly cheaper price uh, maybe up to $50 cheaper than this one. It includes all the features that you see on the 405 or whatever else is missing on it. Again, do your research and ask look around at your local run club to see what kind of features or what kind of models other people are using and see if you really do need to have those features. Uh, if you have a friend that has other forerunners, give it a try and see what kind what features you're using or not using. Perhaps the 110 is probably the trick. Obviously, uh, newer technology probably the way to go. If you're a specific type of runner, this will probably do the trick. If you want a little more data, a little bit more feedback, then you probably want to look at another model.